Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, and I want to share a Bible story. One of the most iconic movies in American cinema history is The Ten Commandments, directed and narrated by Cecil B. DeMille. The 1956 epic made actor Charlton Heston a superstar and depicted the narrative arc of the life of Moses and his leadership of Israel out of Egypt. Yes, years ago, Hollywood routinely made heroes of the great men in the Bible. The story of Moses told in the book of Exodus. Moses became the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter and was raised as an Egyptian. He grew up listening to Egyptian music around Egyptian idols, bathed in Egyptian culture. However, Moses was a Hebrew, an Israelite, one of the nation of God's chosen people. As Moses matured into adulthood, he had an identity crisis. He had to make a choice as to who he would become as a man. He could embrace the culture that raised him and live in the fantasy world of Egyptian paradise, or he could embrace his spiritual heritage and suffer for the salvation of his people. This is a choice that every male must make. You either choose to embrace the cross of Christ and suffer for the salvation of your family and your people, or you choose to embrace the fantasy that the culture has cooked up for you. More simply put, it's a choice to be a man or remain a boy. In the past week, Jason and much of the sports world have referred to the identity crisis that young athletes are facing today. In particular, and most recently, Ja Morant, the Memphis Grizzlies star. Like Moses, Ja and many of his NBA peers are faced with the same decision that Moses had to make in Egypt thousands of years ago. Should they remain loyal to the culture that has bathed them in riches or answer God's calling for all men to serve him? Ja was raised in one family, a structure reflective of God's natural order. But as he grew in stature, fame, and wealth, he decided to embrace the family and culture of the streets. As Patrick Beverly suggested, Ja is living the life of the music that he listens to. It's music that degrades women, music that glorifies drug life, music that promotes death, music that worships the idols of this world. Street life, drug life, thug life, it isn't real. It's a fantasy. The problem with immature people is that they confuse fantasy with reality. The fantasy is thinking that you can live however you want without consequence. The fantasy is thinking that life is a game. It's not a game. That reality just hit Ja in the face. He's been banished, his family's name sullied, and now Ja has to sit with himself and sort out who he wants to be. All Christians should pray that he chooses Moses over mammon and the culture. Just like Ja, Moses had a pivotal moment in his life. He saw an Egyptian and a Hebrew fighting. This was an actual fight, but it actually personified the fight that was going on in Moses' life. In order to make the fight stop, Moses killed the Egyptian, but he also killed the Egyptian identity in his life. He chose to follow God and become who God designed him to be. He got married to a godly woman, started a family, and started working as a shepherd. He embraced the simple, modest life. Just as things began to settle in his life, God called Moses to go back to Egypt. This was not a call to come back and put on for the homies. It was not a call to come back and hit up the clubs and make it rain. 
and it certainly was not a call to go back and resume the life he once had as an Egyptian. God called Moses to return to liberate his people from bondage in Egypt. This was not a call to a boy or one who was insecure in their identity. This was a task for a man. When Moses returned, he had to face a Pharaoh that was determined not to lose his slaves. But he also had to face his people who were slaves that didn't want to leave. The parallel to our current society is the fact that some would rather sell themselves or even sacrifice their children in order to hold on to the fool's goal the culture promises. No matter how many overdoses, murders, addicts, or broken families we see, there is still a pressure to live for a culture that's killing us. When you embrace God, there are things that you leave. The book of Exodus sounds like what it means, exit us. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time for us to leave the childish ways of the streets and embrace the ways of godly manhood. It's time to, to leave the childish ways of sex, drugs, and street life and embrace faith, marriage, family, and discipleship. If the world is going to change, it will take every man making the godly choice. My point is, Jah is not in this alone. God is using Jah to send a message to all of us. If we want Jah to make the right decision, if we want young people to make the right decision, we must help them by rejecting the culture that is seducing them. We're enabling the identity crisis. We're keepers of the culture. The Hebrew writer states, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. You can either be hood famous, have street credentials and die young, or you can suffer for the cause of Christ, save your family and live forever. Let's all serve the Lord. Let us all choose the path of Moses. I'm Anthony, and that's my Bible story. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.